The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hi, and welcome back to The Learning Circuit. We just learned about thermistors, which are basically just heat-activated variable resistors. Now, I was trying to think of a fun circuit project that uses a variable resistor, and I kept coming up blank until suddenly I woke in the middle of the night, and Eureka! I got a great idea. So follow along as I make an LED beating heart. Like any other good hacker, sometimes I'm out shopping and find a great deal on something really cool, but I have no idea what I'm going to use it for. But I buy it anyway. That was the case with this heart light. It has a built-in infinity mirror, and I figured I could hack that and just use the mirror portion in some project. Alas, I never came up with anything. Until now, I realized I could use a thermistor to make a beating heart. So I needed a heart. Well, how convenient. Look what I happen to have lying around. So I'm gonna design my circuit and work the existing electronics of the heart into it and hopefully be able to fit the whole thing inside the base of the heart without having to make any modifications. To the circuit! I've used 555 timer circuits in a bunch of projects so far, so I figured I could incorporate the thermistor into an A-stable circuit design for a nice simple circuit. The key components are the capacitor, C1, that connects pins two and six to ground, the resistor R2 that connects pins 6 and 7, and the resistor R1 that connects pin 7 to VCC. To calculate the timing for an A-stable circuit, we use the values of the capacitor and two resistors in this formula. This will determine the wavelength of the square wave generated, and as you can see here, the high portion of the wave can be a different duration than the low portion. The original equation can be broken down like this to determine the durations of T1, the high signal timing, and T0, the low signal timing. Notice T1 adds the two resistances together, while T0 only factors the resistance value of R2. For the timing of the full wavelength to change, we want R2 to be the resistor that will change values. I'm using a 100 kilo ohm thermistor. Rather than just relying on the data sheet, I can physically check to see how much the thermistor resistance value changes in response to temperature. I can hook the thermistor up to my multimeter and see its value. Looks like at room temperature it's almost 140 kilo ohms. If I heat the thermistor up with a lighter, you can see the resistance drop to about 50 to 60 kilo ohms, sometimes even lower. Ooh, that's getting real low. I almost got that down to 10 kilo ohms. And then if I put an ice pack on my thermistor, I should be able to get it back up above to what it was at room temperature. Holding the ice pack on the thermistor, I'm able to get the resistance up to almost 200 kilo ohms. That's a really nice big jump. In the project circuit, R1 will be a 100 kilo ohm fixed resistor and R2 will be a 100 kilo ohm thermistor. I chose a fixed resistor with the same approximate value as the thermistor so that the ratio of the values of the two resistors would change more dramatically as the thermistor value rose above or fell below the value of the fixed resistor. There are a bunch of 555 timer circuit calculators available online. I like to use the one at allaboutcircuits.com. That's also where I got the formulas I've been using. So if I input 100 kilo ohm fixed resistor value for R1 and the same for the thermistor value for R2. Let's see what happens if I make the capacitor value 100 as well. Okay, that's a lot of milliseconds. Okay, that's gonna be way too long. Let's try 10 microfarads. Okay, so it'll be on for about 1.4 seconds. That's probably longer than I want, but getting in the ballpark. Let's switch over to the breadboard so we can see it with real parts. Here's my 555 A-stable circuit with the thermistor connecting pins six and seven, 
the 100 kilo ohm fixed resistor connecting pin 7 to VCC, and a red LED at the output. Okay, I'll try a 10 microfarad capacitor and see how that looks for speed. Well, that's really slow. Okay, so the next value down I have is a 4.7 microfarad capacitor, so I'm gonna switch and try that. Oh, that's much better. But I'm afraid that might still be a little too slow for what I want. Um, the next value down I have is a 2.2 microfarad capacitor. Let's try that. Okay, that's a nice blink. Uh, I think that'll be good that way when it heats up and speeds up, it'll go really fast. And when it cools down, it'll be uh, noticeably slower. So I think I'm gonna go with 2.2 microfarads. The heart has a built-in 4.5 volt battery compartment and a handy power switch. If I open this up, there's already a current limiting resistor in here for the LEDs. I think I'll just use that instead of adding my own. But since it's between the switch and the battery pack, I'll need to move it to the perf board. And looks like if I'm careful, I should be able to cut part of this out if I need to, to make room for my perf board. Perfect. The 555 timer can run off of 4.5 volts, but the 555 output voltage is a little bit less, closer to four volts. That should still be plenty to power the LEDs, so no problem there. Time to solder it up. Thankfully, the 555 circuit is pretty compact, so I can easily fit everything on here. I'll have wires for power and ground, with ground running to the switch and power to the battery pack. The red wire of the LEDs will run to pin 3, with the original resistor I moved onto the perf board. And the white wire of the LEDs gets connected to ground. Conveniently, there's already a small hole in the side of the heart case. This is perfect because I realized I wanted the thermistor on the outside, so I can do my little lighter and ice pack trick to quickly change the temperature. The thermistor needs to be soldered to wires so it can be stuck through that hole. I need to make sure that the leads of the thermistor won't short. So I need to trim them down and solder shielded wire to them. Okay, I just tested out with my desktop power supply to make sure everything works. And I decided that the 2.2 microfarad capacitor was a little bit faster of a heartbeat that I wanted. So I actually went back and switched back to the 4.7 microfarad capacitor. Uh, I also needed to bend it over uh, to make sure that I have a nice low clearance so that it fits in here quite nicely. So just gotta button it up, throw in some batteries, and then check out how it works. Okay, it's just about done. I'm a little worried about the plastic casing when I wanna be able to put the lighter near the thermistor. So I'm going to use some moldable glue, silicone stuff, Sugru, uh, to build this out. Also make it maybe look a little bit nicer. See how my molding skills are. Uh, and then once that cures, we can test it out. I absolutely love how this project turned out. 
A lot of the projects I found that use thermistors were fire alarms, so I'm really glad that I came up with something a bit more fun than that. But there are endless ideas for what you can do with a thermistor. You've just got to come up with them. So I challenge you, come up with an interesting thermistor project and post it on the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. If I really like your idea, maybe I'll even build it myself and post an update. We'll see. Until then, happy learning.